Hey you, want to learn more about low-budget independent horror movies? Well, you've come to the right place. If I'm going to be honest, I was originally planning to review something else. As much as I enjoy watching Shudder exclusives like The Banishing, Slacks, and Lucky, I get discouraged from writing about them because of how much coverage these movies get. I don't have early access to Shudder releases, so by the time I get to watch these movies on the streaming service, it's already too late for me. As soon as I start writing a review for them, there's already about a hundred others on YouTube alone. So really, what's the point? If there's a review from another channel I love and respect, I'll just share their videos with everyone. Unless I can see these movies early enough to have a review ready in time, there's really no point in me covering them. So going forward, I'll be sticking to what I know best. Low budget independent horror. Now, when I say independent horror, I'm talking everything from low budget to no budget. There's an entire ecosystem of horror movies being made right next door to you. I've written reviews for so many of these movies in the past, and I like to think I've seen it all. I'm talking paper mache monsters, questionable editing, exposed trash bags, actors staring into the camera. I have a ton of respect for film crews and aspiring directors that put everything they have into making a horror movie, especially if they gotta take risks and borrow money to make that dream happen. With that in mind, I'm reviewing a movie that perfectly embodies that do-it-yourself mindset. It's the 2016 horror anthology film, Forgotten Tales. Forgotten Tales features three short stories, all of which are written and directed by Raina Young. What's interesting is that one of these segments is actually based on a true story. To learn which one that is, you'll have to watch the making of documentary that's on the DVD. For those of you not familiar with Raina Young's work, she's an independent screenwriter, director, producer, actress, and a published author. She's also the alter ego of Bay Area horror host Miss Misery. I've had the pleasure of reviewing Reina's short films in the past, so I was pleasantly surprised when she sent me a DVD copy of Forgotten Tales. I think this may be her second feature film coming after 2013's Monster of Golden Gate. You may not know this, but Forgotten Tales is actually based on a comic book of the same name. The graphic novel was published through Scattered Comics, and they feature short horror stories with some really neat illustrations. As I mentioned earlier, this is an anthology horror film. Forgotten Tales includes three short segments, each with a different story and a few connective scenes. One thing to note is that the film itself is very short. For me, that's always a positive. I got the feeling that the cast and crew were going for a creep show or a Tales from the Dark Side type of vibe. And that's very evident when you get to the opening credits. I'm going to break things down with each separate story, because while I did appreciate the movie as a whole, some of it doesn't quite work for me. With that in mind, the first segment in this movie is titled, Ghost Story. In Ghost Story, we follow a woman named Maggie Reynolds, who moves into a new home after separating from her ex-husband. Shortly after Maggie settles in, she begins to experience supernatural occurrences. Now, I'm going to be honest, this was my least favorite segment in the movie. While I did enjoy the story that was being told, I felt that the red herrings were a little too on the nose. Some of the acting takes the mystery away, and unfortunately, you do see the ending coming a mile away. The acting in the segment really doesn't help all that much either. However, I will give Ghost Story all the credit in the world for actually building up tension. There were one or two scenes that actually gave me the creeps. This is mostly due to the music and the sound design. The 
The next segment in the film is called The Babysitter. Unlike the first story, The Babysitter is more of a realistic segment, excluding anything supernatural. In this segment, we follow Claire, a young woman who is strapped for cash. So, like any smart human being, she accepts a job as a babysitter. What begins as a simple task turns into a fight for survival. Now, I thought this segment was a significant improvement compared to Ghost Story. It's a little more straightforward and hits close to home if you've ever been hired to babysit children. I got a feeling that the actors had a blast filming this segment. One actor in particular was having the time of his life. I gotta go. Take care and have fun. Don't burn nothing. I enjoyed the babysitter quite a bit. While it isn't my favorite segment in the movie, I do think it has the best ending. It gets very bloody, and one might say, ahead of itself. The third and final story in this anthology is called Audition. This one actually stars Raina Young, the writer and director of the movie. She plays the role of Shannon, an actress who is actively searching for work. She comes across this posting on the internet and ends up auditioning for someone she thinks is legit. The audition itself actually doesn't go very well. Is this okay to wear? Hmm, I was kind of hoping you'd wear a skirt. Sometime after the audition, the director begins to obsessively bother Shannon and tells her that she's perfect for the leading role in his movie. As you might imagine, this creepy obsession takes a very dangerous turn, and I was all in for this segment. Speaking of segments, Raina's character Shannon actually appears throughout the film. Not to give much away, but she's one of the few characters that actually connects the stories together. Hi, did you just come from the audition? How was it? Yeah, and I can sure use a nice hot bath after that one. Wait a minute, did you catch that? That actress standing next to Shannon looks very familiar. And you're definitely not gonna disrespect Candace like that. Oh no, no, no. Yep. Forgotten Tales marks the on-screen debut of Shotzi Blackheart. At the time I'm recording this review, Shotzi Blackheart is one of the NXT Tag Team Champions alongside her partner Ember Moon. Both of them are terrific athletes, and I'm a big fan of their work as professional wrestlers. I get that Shotzi herself is a huge horror fanatic, so seeing her in this movie was pretty awesome. If you ask me, that's a major horror cred right there. <laughs> I think it goes without saying that Audition is my favorite segment in this movie. It's well written, well acted, and has an awesome ending. I thought you had friends over. I now, as far as my score goes, I was leaning towards a 6. However, I checked out the bonus features on the DVD. There's a great making of featurette that gives you a behind the scenes look at the movie. The cast and crew explains their roles on the project and that made me appreciate all their hard work even more. Hi. I fucked that up. I fucked that up. I tried to cover it. Another cool feature on the disc is a music video for the song Darker and Darker, performed by the San Francisco based metal band Damn It. This song plays through the credits and it fits perfectly with the theme of the movie. As I mentioned before, I've reviewed so many of these types of films in the past, and I would say maybe about an eighth of them actually get a distribution deal. So the fact that this movie actually has an official DVD and Blu-ray release is pretty awesome. If you're into horror anthologies like I am, this one might be worth looking into. With that said, I'm giving the movie Forgotten Tales a 7 out of 10. While I have you here, I highly recommend checking out Last Doorway Productions on both their YouTube channel and official website. Every week, the group posts episodes of Miss Misery's Movie Massacre on YouTube for your enjoyment. If you dig classic low-budget horror movies, then that's the place you're going to want to go. Remember when I mentioned that Raina Young was a published author? Raina writes these really cool spooky children's books. As an example, I have here The Pumpkin Man of Hollow Falls. This is a great book. The illustrations look fantastic, and my kids enjoy reading it too. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. 
I can't thank you enough for the number of views, likes, and comments you leave below. Your support of this channel is highly appreciated. Going forward, I will continue to give a voice to those who put their blood, sweat, and tears into making their dreams come true. With that said, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and most importantly, remember to support your local horror hosts.